Okay, a lot of you have probably seen this lock before. This is an SNG8088. Um, Sergeant in Greenleaf. Um, this is actually, um, this was um, U.S. government issue um, authorized for various classified document storage. It's no longer used. Apparently there is a vulnerability in it which I was unable to either get sufficient information on or use. Um, to open it, but this is no longer authorized for, for GSA and um, secure use. Um, it is kind of neat because the operation of it is pretty similar to a Group 2 um, safe lock, and it's compact, and you can buy one for, I don't know, 40 or $60 on eBay. Um, there's also a newer version called the 8077, which is somewhat larger, has a shiny chrome exterior um, and a little different dial um, and that one is still standard issue. Um, an interesting thing about this is that the body I don't know what it's made out of but it's not st it's not ferrous steel, it, uh, not magnetic. It could be some kind of stainless but um, that doesn't attract a magnet. Uh, the shackle is clearly steel and it's pretty hard. I did a very light check to it. Um, so some of you may want to try to manipulate this open, so I'm about to give out the combination, which happens to be the factory default. Um, I don't have a change key for it, so I'm not able to alter it, um, and I don't want to try to hack it, because if I break it, I don't know how to fix it. So, <clears throat> But um, I'll just sort of demonstrate the operation. It took me a while to get this right, despite having read the instructions about eight times, but just being so used to running normal like master lock combination locks from school, there's just certain mistakes I was making, so I thought I'd just go through that. Um, so what you do is you start by zeroing the lock. Um, so you turn it counterclockwise, letting z the number zero pass the, the indicator here four times, a total of at least four times. Okay, so we've done that. Now the combination is 10, 20, 30. Okay, so we're going to continue rotating to the point where we get to 10. Okay, now the next digit or the next number is 20. So we're going to rotate three times. Um, we're going to rotate the dial until 20 hits the indicator for the third time. So it's not like we rotate past 10 three times and then hit 20. So this, which is what you would do on like a master lock, so that's one. Two, three, and you. These things you need to be really pretty precise. Okay, so now I've got the second number dialed in. The next one is thirty, and I need to dial it so that thirty passes this once and stops at it. So it, it, when it touches this for the second time, so here comes thirty. That's one, and then we continue around, and you can feel it pick up the last wheel. We go to 30. Now at this point, the combination is dialed in, but the lock won't open. There is a disc in the back that the um, that the uh, nose of the um, whatever the thing is called, the lever that uh, releases the bolt, drops into. Um, it hit, has to drop into the three notches in the wheels as well as this rear thing. And it's designed so that it can, you can only apply pressure to um, the locking bar when the dial is at a specific position, which happens to be zero. So now we go anti-clockwise back to zero. Okay, and then if I've gotten this right, you give it a good firm tug. And there it is. Whew, thought I was going to have to do a take two. Um, it's a little sticky. I don't know if it's because it's older or just finicky. Um, at this point the dial's locked up. If I close the shackle it will remain, it will reset the dials in some kind of horrible way and will not um, open again until you dial the combination in. Um, so at this point, um, you know, you can take the lock off, do whatever you need to do. Um, but we can now look at the back um, <clears throat> and there's this little hole you can see here 
this is where a change key would go and you notice it's blocked off and it's been blocked off the whole time so you can't stick anything in there I think in some of the older ones you could um, stick something in there and that I think that would have lighted there's some I, some way of sticking a shim in and being able to detect the positions of the gates on the wheels <clears throat> at any rate if we had a change key we could now push this guy up a little spring-loaded door and you can see that the Let's see, is that visible? Now I zoom in for you. And focus. Okay, so you see that little door here? I push this up and the that opens. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see inside, but. Nah, you can't really see, but if you look through there, um, you can see various little holes and stuff um, in the discs and <clears throat> I believe the way that it works is that you dial the you, you lock it back up or you, you leave this you actually leave this open lock the lock you dial the combination but using this index here as the um, as the mark that causes the all the wheels to set in a funny a little bit off and there's some little holes that show up in the wheels through the little window here. You stick the change key in, you turn it a certain amount, you then do some procedure, um, cross your fingers, hope you got it right, and um, and then um, I think you then test the lockout. Um, I don't have the key and I'm not going to risk screwing up the lock for the next guy and for Bill um, to find out whether I know how to do that, so I'm going to leave it alone. But um, SNG lock, pretty cool. Um, if you've never played with a, a safe lock or anything like that, this is kind of gives you a little bit of a feel for it. I tried manipulating it. I think I had decoded the 10 and the 20 um, after a lot of fiddling. Um, but I was so screwed up with the left, right, left, right nonsense that I, I wasn't able to finish manipulating it. And I kind of gave up and looked at the instructions again. Um, but I didn't know it was on the default, but I just tried that again. So anyhow, um, kind of a cool lock. You can get them on eBay again for, I don't know, I've seen them up to, you know, $40, $60. Um, the newer ones are a little bit more expensive, the 808, the 8077. This is the 8088. Um, but uh, neat lock. Uh, thanks for including it, Bill. It was uh, fun to play with. I've never had my hands on one of these. And um, I don't know, I may get, may get a cutaway version of one of these and, and uh, play with it. It's certainly a, an inexpensive way to... Um, to get some experience fiddling with uh, combination locks without having to buy a big expensive group 2 or group 1 um, safe lock. Anyhow, um, thanks for watching. Um, have fun. Thanks to Bill for sending this and the many other locks out. I'm about ready to send the box on to the next guy and I need a name and address. So um, if Bill or um, someone else could volunteer someone in the US that would be fabulous um, and I'll get this in the mail to you um, before the end of the week okay anyhow thanks for watching cheers and keep it legal